Some people want to meet here. Should they meet here like 7.30 or 8? Or? I think you can try to the place because uh, on Saturday we have a lot of people who want to. Okay. So just go ahead and try to your house. Okay. From your house to the uh, Sunday night. To the ferry. If you have friends, you can come, go together. Right? Instead of trying to buy yourself one call, you can go with your friends. Save gas, save energy. <laughs> so when you, yes, go ahead. Are we bringing food to share? Like no, just bring your own okay. personal. Uh, you can bring extra. Okay. Yeah. And, oh, so I don't worry about plates or anything. No, just bring your own. Everybody yeah. have a food picnic. Yeah. Yeah. Just bring your sandwich or apple or something. You can be eating and hanging. Park. I don't know if they have restaurant or tea. I don't think we have enough time to go to the restaurant. <laughs> Just a uh, very slight snack, lunch, yeah. make yourself a sandwich or something. Yeah, we just sit and eat. Or you can bring me some chip or something to share with the group. So, yeah. How many people go? It's only like less than 20, right? So it's fine. Eighteen or nineteen people. Yes, sir. It is my first time here. Okay, thank you. Have you studied meditation before? Just by myself. Okay. What kind of meditation? Uh, Shant, are you practice? Soto Zen. Soto Zen. Mm -hmm. How many years? Uh, be two years this July. Okay, that's good. <laughs> you have any question, comment about your practice? No, other than I need to find a group now, a sangha. Okay, you should that. Yeah. We have some books, some information back there. After the class, you can get some. Okay. Anybody else? You can join the group. Go in. <laughs> Want to go? Join the group? It's most by your way. I guess so. Maka. They can be huh? Yeah. <laughs> I think like three years ago they come here just like little kid and now it's big. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Question, comment? Anything that you like to share? The Columbia video we are not finished yet, so I'll be procrastinating. <laughs> Different bits. It's a very short. Anybody have a story to tell, to share anything that you want to ask about your practice? Mm -hmm. 
goes. Mm -hmm. um, Maitreya is usually shown as being overweight, and I'm just wondering if there's any significance to that or why that is. Is there any special reason? Um, Maitreya is the Buddha, the future Buddha. That's the only Chinese people they put <laughs> big candy. Because uh, Madhya he appears a Bodhisattva, a fat belly. But we have a statue of Madhya, very skinny. So we just represent fat men. In, in general, in Asian country, in old days, really, if you're fat, you're, you consider beauty, happiness. If you're skinny, you're <laughs> You don't have enough food or other stuff. So represent fat from me, represent happiness, joy, that's why you have eat well, sleep well. <laughs> you have big body. Right? In older in older Asian country. Right? Usually family that is rich, they are always fat, big, small. So that's that's the so that's the I, I know more about that because the, in the Song Dynasty there was a, a monk named Bu Dai in China and he was fat. And so everyone thought he was very cute. So after he died they started making statues of him. Mm -hmm. And it was like a good luck charm. And then it just became mixed up with the Maitreya. So, so yeah. sometimes you see the fat one. And, and then the idea of having the wide belly, it means like he has the ability to take everyone on board, like he's a, a ship to take you across, across to the other side, to Nirvana. So it means that he has like the capacity to save everybody inside, it. like a big heart. Yeah, it's like compassion, loving kindness. Thank you. But we have a statue of Maitreya Buddha up here, small one, it's, a, it's not very fat. Inside a white cage. Which is the statue? The one that inside the cube yeah. that's in the front? Yes. It's much easier. It's just like the Buddha. Because Buddha, Buddha Sabha, they can appear in many forms. In this country, they form this form, and different country, different form. So down. See a book, a big belly, he said. Maitreya Buddha is not mine. Right. Because uh, Buddha is formless. He just appears in many forms. So. Let's go on. Who is Maitreya? Is that what the name is? Future. What did you say? The future Buddha. Oh, the happy Buddha. <laughs> yes, go ahead. So when he passed away, who passed away? The, the monk you're talking about with what? the big belly. Uh huh. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't what you're but okay. when he passed away, um, when he passed away, I'm sorry. When did he pass away? Oh, I don't know. I was, I didn't, I didn't, didn't ask you that question. Um, I was wondering if um, they made statues of him just because they thought he was cute, or did he like? Well, I, th I think it was just that he was adorable and loved, but I don't know any more than that. Uh, usually, Asian countries, usually you have a lot of love, compassion, kindness. You eat easily, you sleep well, consider fat. I mean, you are happy. You're, you, you're skinny, I mean, you don't have enough food to eat, you're not joyful. So this is perhaps I represent compassion, love and kindness. You you eat easily, you take everything calm or easily. Right? Like people that throw up you, you accept it. Really the, the fat belly Buddha is the sick children with him. Re represent the eyes, ear, nose, and body and mind. 
all the things that come to disturb him, he feel kind, he feel fine. Like the foam come to his eye, he not touch it. The sound come to his ear, he not touch it. So this the sick children uh, try to when they pick the ear, the eyes, and all the mouth is represent the, the six sins. And he always laughing and funny, right? Like, that's mean compassion, love, and kindness. He able to let go easily. Is a person who able to live well, let go easily? Basically, gain a lot of weight, right? It's in older tradition, older uh, Asian country. If you go out in the street and you see that person big, belly, fat, smiling, I mean that person is rich, kindness, compassion, right? So that's that's concern. But if you are so skinny, you are so slender, they scare of you. That you cannot sleep, you cannot eat, you are hate and you have a lot of uh, what we call dislike. <laughs> That's why you cannot sleep and eat well as well as skinny. <laughs> That's only the represent our day. But today's society is different, right? Mm -hmm. But in usually older day, we all want to be gain weight, right? To be healthy, be, be, be fat. Especially in Asian country, usually rich family, they have bigger, healthier body than the poor uh, family. But today society is different. If you are rich, you are famous. You have to be slim. <laughs> you are <laughs> all those stuff. It's different depend on the society. Yeah. Because in Japan they have the sumo wrestler. Mm -hmm. The sumo wrestler is big. Yes. But like you say, all they do is train. Mm -hmm. They eat a lot, you know, eat lots of food and whatever, <laughs> and sleep. Mm -hmm. And they're looked upon as very high mm -hmm. in Japan society. Yes. But yeah, they're, they're big <laughs> sumo wrestlers. <clears throat> okay. Anybody else? Change to a new subject. Well, just about the sumo wrestlers, they're also very healthy, is my understanding. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. yeah they're really, really big, but they're, but they're, very they're healthy. Yeah, they mm -hmm. stay healthy. Mm -hmm. Okay, anybody else have a question, comment? Or anything like this? Um, <clears throat> can you define the difference between visual awareness and the essence of the visual awareness? And how true awareness is different from that? Uh, visual awareness I means you have to borrow some object to visualize. It's like I want to visualize Buddha. I have to borrow the object of the Buddha to appear in my image. And I visualize and my awareness. Because I have a lot of bad thinking, bad thought. Now I try to borrow the Buddha statue to always look at his face and his ears, his head, all his body, so beautiful. So you can able to transform your negative thought to positive thought, right? So that's what we call the uh, borrow the visual to awareness to contemplate on the object. Doesn't matter what object you use, you just visualize. You can use your mom, your dad, whatever person you respect, you visualize him. So all your bad thinking, bad thought will be uh, dropping out. Your kind, kindness and compassion will grow more stronger. Just like if you remember somebody you respect, suddenly all your bad thought is gone, right? All your hatred, all anxiety, fear is gone. So like uh, one time, uh, I practice to contemplate. If I have a lot of anger, I always visualize get a Buddha statue to visualize. If I have compassion, loving kindness, he's smiling. So my, my, my heart, my mind is also calm. That's the only borrow to visualize of an object to get rid of my negative thinking, negative thought. So that's the visualize of uh, essence. And your second. So the essence. There was visual awareness mm -hmm. and then the essence. The essence awareness, awareness is that you don't use anything out. You just, your true nature, you just see it, you don't attach to it. Just like right now I'm seeing, I don't visualize anything. 
but I'm always awareness of the days. When you see other days, that's an essential. That means seeing, hearing, tasting, each such as stillness. That is the essential of our practice. But the visualize is more object. No, I didn't say visualize, I said visual awareness. Yeah, vi visual awareness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that is visual awareness. That means you borrow some object of visual awareness. Mm -hmm. So that is the, the two different things. But the, the two things, it looks like different, but it's not the same. It's the main thing is to calm your mind, steal your mind, get your anger, your frustration, your delusion mind uh, gone. I mean, less thinking. It's helped you to be more positive thinking. But uh, in the visualize, uh, visualize object, right? No, no, I so said visual awareness and okay. then the essence of visual awareness, not so, visualize. So visual awareness is, I mean, you still use the object to visualize. I mean, you still have that thinking, but what we call positive thinking. You visualize until you let go of that visualize, and then you go back to the essence visual. You see that? Everybody is there? I think I was saying something unclearly. <coughs> so it's like visual awareness, right? Your awareness of something that you see, but you don't talk to it. Well, um, my understanding it was um, just an awareness of everything, including um, even dark, like it doesn't depend on solid objects, mm -hmm. space, light or darkness. It's for can, visual awareness. Yeah, visual awareness is cannot use your eye to awareness, but use your mind to see it. Because if you use your eyes, it's limited. But sometimes you have to use your mind. Even a person who cannot see, they can visualize awareness. Mm -hmm. It's just like you close your eyes, you can visualize the awareness, your whole body. Right. So it depends on the technique, the method you use, how you use it. So visual awareness, because our awareness is always there. Right? It's always there, even though we sleep or not sleep. We are waking or not waking. Our awareness is over there. But it's just it's that, that we don't forget. we don't remember that we have awareness. The light, like twenty four hour. How many hours do you reckon, do you remember yourself? And how many hours do you remember the cookie, the food, your wife, your husband, and all this stuff around? You see that? So you can observe that. And um, what about the true awareness? How is it different from what you just said? The true awareness without attachment, you just know it, you're just aware of it, you just automatically know it. It's you're like, aware of it or you? You go it? on beyond <coughs> aware of it, just like I'm seeing. I don't say I have my eye, I just see. Right? I have feeling. I don't say, oh, I have a feeling that I'm feeling. I mean, you always have that thing, but you just. It's, it's like such a stillness, without any attachment, without any arising of uh, bad thinking or good thinking. So it's beyond the, the good and the bad. It's beyond good or bad? Yes. It's beyond duality. Right. In Vinabhi, we call the Tan Thay, I mean, your nature of seeing. This is the true seeing. Like when we learn to drive, our first method of drive, we have to pay attention, right? But when we are able to drive well, we just, we don't, we just drive, right? We don't say, oh, I have to put on the brake, we have to put on the uh, driveway, or I have to follow this step. You don't have to do that anymore. You just go in and start your engine, sit your bell, and drive in and awareness, the red light, how speed, all those stuff. See? Even though you pay attention, but it's beyond your attention. But if you, when you begin a, a first driver, you have to aware of everything, right? You have to check the, the motor, the brake, all those stuff around it. Just like a beginner meditator and a person who already beyond meditation. I don't know, it's really difficult for 
begin not to understand, right? Do you understand that? Do you have an idea of what I'm saying? No. <laughs> Very simple, right? If you practice, you can tell. So, uh, Just like swimming. For beginners, right? they have to learn how to swim like this, that way. But if one you're a professional, you just jump the water and automatic swim, right? You don't need to say, oh, I have to break my leg, my arm, all this stuff anymore. You just jump the water, it's all made. I don't mind you float. Right? I mean, something you already know, you already practiced, you already have that ability, you just get in and do it. It's like riding bicycle. It's like swimming. If you thought you were swimming 30 years ago, but you never swim, you just jump the water, you automatically float yourself. But knowing swim is never disappear. But if you are a beginner, never swim, you jump in the net, you drop out. Right? So our, our awareness is like that. If we don't practice meditate, we don't have awareness every day, then all the object, all the thought is like pulling the earth, like swimming. A person don't want to swim, they just jump in the water and then they drown. Okay, next question. So, so they both share the attribute of um, not appearing or disappearing, right? The essence of the visual awareness and the true awareness. They both share that same attribute, right? If they go to that conclusion, yes, they can share that same role. But the method is kind of one is fast, one is slow, one is take time, one is automatic. And both of them don't, don't depend on causes or conditions, right? Everything has to depend on cause and condition. Even the true awareness? If you go beyond true awareness, then no need cause and condition. It's already there. Yeah, because our nature, true nature is beyond cause and condition. Because cause and condition is still reality. That's why we call the true awakening nature. It's beyond the concept of cause, condition, beyond duality, beyond up and high, low and low and high, and all that stuff. <coughs> so that's why we have we don't have uh, at this moment we don't have uh, the right rise in our thinking. Distinguish. Understand that? No. It's hard for me to distinguish the difference between something that shares the same attribute. Okay. <clears throat> Just like when I strike a bell, you just hear, right? But if you just hear, you don't want to rise any thought. That's true nature. But if you hear the, you arrive, oh, it's a male, it's a big male, it's a small male, it sounds funny, it sounds not good, it sounds long, it sounds so. Mm -hmm. That's duality. So the main thing is that uh, even though we don't understand because we are not that level yet, so that's why the Buddha said you have to continue practice until you achieve that level. Because can, sometimes we cannot use our thinking mind to analyze, to understand. We have to use our true nature to understand. That's why uh, the Zen master said you have to really start thinking to be able to understand our concept. Because the concept beyond thinking, analyze. So that's why when you ask that question, the Zen master come and walk you. They don't let you think. Right. But for me, I have to let you think. <laughs> I want to go the blue.
police come here and put me in jail. <laughs> yes. So sometimes we cannot use our thinking mind to answer. You have to answer that for yourself by beyond practice, by your daily practice. And then similarly, you, you enlightenment. You say, ah, oh, that's so simple. So I'm just answer my own answer. I just borrow the language, the word, the term to describe it. But it's only 20 or 30 percent correct. If you want the true correct, you have to practice to achieve that level to understand. Okay. Anybody? Any further question, comment, or anything that you'd like to share with the group from the practice? It's two weeks, right? Ready for holiday, right? Next week we have holiday, right? July 4th, right? We have class next week, yeah. but I'm leaving on Thursday. I'll be back on Sunday. I have a few trip take the group to Oregon on Thursday. We have no buses. If you want to sign up, go to Oregon with us. So sign. We take a tour on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We are back here on Sunday night. Four day field trip from here to Oregon. All the timber. We have uh, only seven seats available left on the buses. So each person of seven hundred dollar is got all package of lunch, breakfast, hotel, everything. Seven hundred dollar for for three nights four day. If you want to go, just sign up now. Just a uh, trip. <laughs> <coughs> Last year we went to uh, Vancouver, D.C. This year we plan to go to Oregon. Okay, next, year, next, year, next year we go to California. So every year we, because usually the old Vietnamese community people, they don't go out, out a lot. They usually they stay home to care children, their grandchildren, so they don't have no time to go. So we put a few trips for them so they can go out and most of them they cannot drive. <coughs> so we just take a bus and they take care of them, visit temple to temple, place around Oregon, <coughs> Washington, or whatever. Make them more enjoy life. <laughs> then stay home, take care of all their grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> and they get upset, they get grouchy. <coughs> Okay, anybody else? Question? I'd like to say something about my trip. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Are you my trip yet? Am I? Yeah, you look like it. <laughs> uh, well, it's interesting. I'm not sure exactly if the concept of my trip existed in. Brahmanism before the Buddha, but uh, the Brahmanic religion, the Vedic religion, and the Zoroastrian religion, um, both nations are civil, and the religions are civil as well. They're both different expressions from the same source. They both speak, uh, or they spoke, a related language. And it's interesting to compare and contrast Brahmanism with Zoroastrianism because they have devas and everything in common except their their perceptions of them are, are different. Uh, in, in Brahmanism, devas can be angels and uh, demons, whereas in uh, Zoroastrianism, I believe they're just angels, they're not demons. 
And there's a triune Godhead in Brahmanism, Brahma, the self-creating God, and out of whom is created Vishnu and Shiva, God of life and destruction. But in Zoroastrianism, they have Ahura Mazda, the, the wise Lord, the great Lord, uh, the Holy Spirit, Spenta Mainu, uh, Angra Mainu, the evil spirit, who's like Satan, and uh, Mitra. Mitra is the son of Ahura Mazda. He has three incarnations, once in the beginning of time, once uh, and it never lasted long enough for the second one, and then once at the end of time. And there's parallels with uh, Christianity in that. Um, he had other names as well that were, you know, metaf metaphors of his life and teaching and existence. Um, and also that parallels because there's some old archaic Christian teaching that uh, I'm not sure exactly what, what Christ's relationship to Adam was, but that he is the, the second Adam or, you know, <coughs> is the uh, amender of Adam's error. Um, but it's a further interesting connection is in the Zendavesta, the Bible of the Zoroastrians, they have uh, the flood myth, they have the creation myth, and they have, except in their story, uh, Adam and Noah are the same person, and he was a king. And he didn't build a boat, he built a big shed and put all the animals in there. And it talks about how many stadia it was and how he could ride his chariot around it. Uh, and that's how life was saved from, from destruction in the flood. But uh, lexically, Mitra and Maitreya are the same word, the same thing. Um, and in James Darmstadter, he was one of the first uh, classicists to translate Eastern texts into European languages. I think he did in English. He worked with Max Müller and that whole group. They started translating all of the, the Quran and uh, the sutras and the Vedas. I mean, they were the first generation of uh, academics to really get their hands on Eastern literature and bring it to the people in Europe and America. But he translated Mitra as friendship, or it's a friend. But it's not necessarily like, like your, your bonami, but like a, uh, a contractual, a covenantal, like a, a legal friend, some, something like that. Which I thought was interesting, because that's another parallel with Christ, because you know, the blood of the covenant, you know, the new covenant. Um, so my personal belief is that my prayer is Christ, but there's a third incarnation yet to come in the end days, which parallels Buddhist teaching because Maitreya is supposed to come at a low Dharma period when there's wickedness in the earth and knowledge of the Dharma is lost or its practices, you know, uh, just monks in the mountains. And, uh, he will bring the, the truth back and restore the, the teaching, and that will lead us into a new uh, age. What do they call that in Hinduism? The yugas? Because we're in the Kali Yuga, they say, the age of death and dying, and we'll be going into a new age, supposedly of life and happiness and prosperity, which also parallels Gnostic teaching, because they teach the same basic concept, you know, that there's the, the cosmological zodiac, that, uh, you know, that Christ is the, the herald of the age of Aquarius, and after the age of Aquarius comes the age of Capricorn, and basically the same concepts, you know, so, yeah, that's why he's my favorite. <laughs> So I never climb my chair. Okay. Any further question, comment? I have just a quick question. So 
when we meditate, does it matter which leg is on top? Because um, the statue would always show the right leg on top of the left leg, but can we, does it matter at all when we meditate? Yeah. You talk about sitting position, yeah. uh, half lotus or full lotus? Yeah, it uh, doesn't matter right or left, depending on you, the body position, because everyone has their own position of body differently. But uh, usually we frag both, we try to switch around to see if it, uh, my meditation on the left or the top is more common or the right or the top, because it's the kind of blood circulation too. So sometimes you can try both. So like when we sit, uh, Four lotus sometimes are right go in and left go out, and when we shoot around to see how our body, because everybody has their blood system, circular system different, so they can on the seat to seat. If the, this sitting helps you to more calm the blood flow, fluidly, thoroughly, and follow fast. And it's also the left hand or the right hand. Right? Usually the left hand on bottom, the right hand on top, or the people enjoy it. So you can try see us reality what is comfortable with. We have to depend on other position to see ourselves. We cannot touch just one position because there's no right and no wrong. Uh, Troy had his peace circle before um, our meditation here today, and unfortunately I was the only one who showed up. Um, anyway, it's excellent what Troy does. He's not going to do it next month. He's going to be out of the country, but I would recommend it if uh, he continues it in the future, um, the peace circle. Um, I did tell Troy a little story during the priest circle, and I can briefly repeat it here. Uh, there was a YouTube video I watched. It was a um, person called, I believe, Derek Paravinci or similar, and he was born premature. He had a lot of problems, and his life was very difficult. He's totally blind as a result of his birth trauma. Um, but you can play any piece of music. He can listen to it and he can play it back. And I, I've seen it and it's just incredible. So any piece of music, he can't see, but he can play the music on piano perfectly, play it back. And then he'll start improvising. So he creates new melodies and new harmonies from that piece. And it just struck me so much how difficult his life is. He can, he can barely take care of himself and barely get by, but he has this incredible talent that just must be so special. Just like one of uh, Steve Wonder, all his life is right, right? But he played it with music. Right. So I really have to give him. So we are the same. So they're like, uh, I think Beethoven or Bach, he, he born out of line, right? But he even play famous music, piano, mm -hmm. when he study music in college. I think Beethoven or Bach or something. Yeah. Mozart, I think Mozart. Mozart. Yeah. Mozart. It's like his dad, right? He able to play music <coughs> very good. Yeah, Beethoven lost Beethoven. his hearing, became deaf, yeah. Yeah, he wrote the Pastoral Symphony. Yeah after he couldn't hear nature anymore. So he wrote the symphony so that he could have that feeling of yes. nature again. Yeah. So we all have our gift, depending on our, our ability, from body to body, we just practice and continue. Every gift is special if you continue to do it. Right? Just like one of our retreat uh, guy in Colombia, he gave us this uh, retreat play to do the retreat. 
All his spoon, he all have deep. He never get a. He's like, right now he's like the richest guy and then <laughs> successful journalism. And he say all his life is like D D D D <laughs> in the class. And I told him, lucky you can D. A lot of people get A, they suicide. <laughs> they kill themselves. You can D, you know, kill yourself. A lot of famous people, a lot of rich people, see, they have a lot of money, fortune. At the end, they kill themselves. You see society today, a lot of success people, but they have a lot of stress, anxiety, fear. So the main thing is that it doesn't matter whether you success or not success, plus our mind, spiritual happiness. That's the main thing, not the material. Sometimes we have everything, fame, fortune, materials, but we Mind's not in control, it's stressful. You see a story goes to this today, a lot of famous people they kill themselves. Mm -hmm. So that's very sad. They cannot go and get help. <coughs> Fortunately, they have no meditation center somewhere. <coughs> if they call meditation center, they can help themselves. Because in their position, there's a lot of stress, fear, anxiety. Because even though they are happy outside, but at, when they sleep at night, they always have loneliness, fear. Yeah. So this is difficult. Just like sometimes we are the same thing. Generally, like we go to work, we play with friends, we look like happy. But at night, we close the door, our oh, fears, anxiety, is pop up. So the main thing every day you have to meditate, awareness of thought, and to be able to practice and to transform all your negative emotion to positive emotion. So don't let your negative emotion pull you. It's like a person don't have to swim, it just pull you. So that's why we have a Shankar here. Every Wednesday you meet here, you share your experience, you get some advice from your practice. You are able to deal with your daily life and transform your negative thing to positive thing. Okay, yes, come in. Yeah, I have a coworker, he's always stressing out, mm -hmm. and uh, I always tell him just remember to breathe. <laughs> breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Mm -hmm. And he does it, and then, you know, one time he came back and said, yeah, that really helped. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah. You know, when you're stressed out, you tend to forget to breathe. You just, mm -hmm. you know, less oxygen mm -hmm. tends to make you more stressed out. <coughs> so, mm -hmm. breathe. Today he was stressed out. Yeah. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have a lot of uh, soothing, soci uh, soothing today in society. But there are a lot of stressed children, especially children. Anxiety, fear, because they play with friends, all this technology, all this material. Right? So that's the same. Even though we have everything, all the food, all the glow, but because the spiritual is very important. Sometimes they have nobody to help them. <coughs> There's no con uh, consequence to breaking any of the precepts if you're in a different body, right? The five precepts only apply to your physical body? It depends on your mind. It depends on your mind? Yes. Because the uh, five precepts is dependent on the form and formless too. So the deep level of the five percent is your mind. Even though you don't have a form, but you have a consciousness, then you break the five percent. This is consequent. It's like a killing. You don't kill personally, but your mind, our thinking, a killing. Then there is a consequent. Even if it doesn't have a consequence to any other being. Yes. 
Because the more you think about killing, then later what we call mind killing, the concept is killing, the evil thought. But if you think about nothing a lot, then when you have a form, that's a lot to do. Right. So that's what we call bad thought. So if you create bad thought, there's a bad concept. If you create good thought, good concept. Even though we don't have form, but we have this mind. It generates negative energy too. Yes, it's also a cost you have negative energy too. Mm -hmm. If you think a lot of killing in your mind, then you have this negative energy. Mm -hmm. And people come sit near you, they feel something weird. Right? Mm -hmm. Like a person with all anxiety, fears. Even though they have no one, but when they sit, you sit with that person, you can feel that negative energy, that suffocating energy. <clears throat> because all our thinking, we create this, what we call this energy. Positive energy, positive thinking, positive energy, negative thinking, negative energy. Whatever you think is becoming form already. Like right now, I'm sitting, I think I can't, there's a form of cat in my heart right? That's why a spirit, hungry ghost, they can never see the mind. Right? That's why a lot of people are afraid of ghosts. When you're afraid of ghosts, and the ghosts know that you're afraid of ghosts, now they play with you. They make you fear them. You see that? If your mind has none fear, nothing, then they don't play with you. Right? So whatever we think, this is a form in our mind. Yes, sir. Are there different ways to get rid of different fears? Depend on what fear you get, yeah. Like fear of what? Um, ghosts. Why do you fear of ghosts? Because it scares the whole of me. Why is it harm you? Because... Because you're thinking, right? You're always thinking. Do you think? Your thinking is never true. Right? If you go walk in the cemetery, there's a lot of ghosts around. There's no harm to you. <laughs> I think you'll probably harm the ghost. Like when we see the mouse, oh, I'm afraid of mouse. The mouse run away. The, the mouse think that, oh, she might kill me, therefore I have to run away. And then you think, oh, this mouse has scared me. See, like that? You just, you just protect your ego. <coughs> And the mouth protect his or her ego. Right? Sometimes we say we are afraid of ghosts, probably the ghosts are afraid of you. <laughs> they see you run away. See? So we have this negative thinking, that means we have this ego. When we are afraid of somebody hurt us, I mean we have this ego attachment. If we have no ego, then nobody hurt you. So that's why when we meditation, we don't fear no fear of any ghost. If we have fear of none ghost, then the ghost will not harm you. Because you are fearing the ghost, that's why the ghost can never see your mind. That's why it harm you easily. You see that? So whatever arises in your mind, don't afraid of ghost. If you have none afraid, then the ghost will not harm you. If you are afraid, then they will harm you in a different way. <laughs> so I don't know who are afraid of who. Probably the ghost the are afraid of you. <laughs> okay, good question. Anybody else? Comment? Question? <clears throat> yes, go ahead. Kind of a weird uh, comment, but, or question. My husband loved to watch uh, documentaries on World War I and World War II, and there's lots of killing on that. Mm -hmm. So, our house was little, so what he watches, I usually end up watching too. So, is that taking part in killing? in 
Can you say that again? I don't know. Yeah, she can sang you say it louder. I cannot hear you. My my husband likes to watch the documentaries on World War One and World War Two, mm -hmm. and there's lots of actual footage of killing. killing and our house is little, so what he watches usually what I watch too. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to get away from that, and I sometimes wonder am I participating in that killing because I'm watching those documentaries, and learning from them. Is that instead of second hand second hand smoke? <laughs> See. Even though you're not smoke, but you see the naked person smoking, then you inhale that. So very dangerous. Yes, go ahead. Just to be sure. What's your name? Okay. Oh, thank you. Wait, do it sad to watch like bad movies? Or like, yeah. If you watch bad movies. Mm -hmm. Like flirty, really. Mm -hmm. like, um, and, and what? Like, is that bad? It depends on how you view it. Well, I don't like it. Watch, I do. No, if you bad watch bad movie, it's creating more fear, anxiety, mm -hmm. your oppression arise, don't watch. Because all the things like stimulate your mind, more disturbed. Like we are afraid of ghosts, maybe we can tell you watch a ghost movie. That's afraid you will get more and more. So we are touched more. Right? Like we like to watch all this scary movie, bad movie, killing movie. And then the more we watch in our minds, we, what we call, um, we are uh, addicted. We get it. Like second hand smoke. You get it. And coffee inside. And then your rise of fear, anxiety, all this stuff, you arise. That's why for our training monks in monastery, usually beginner monks, we don't allow them to watch TV, no movies, no paper. Because we want them to have more time to think the past thing, the good thing. Because when they watch TV and watch uh, with the newspaper, they will attach create more anxiety fears. Right? So if I begin in a month, we train them not to, until you train 10 or 20 years, then you're ready to see all this stuff. So that's why monastery in, in Vietnam, we don't have a TV or newspaper. It's not allowed. Right? Because when you see something, you, you will attach to it. Your anxiety, your fear, your rise more stronger. For, for yourselves, how to act it. Yes? Alright, I just want to make sure I understand this clearly. Did you say that a ghost cannot harm you unless you're afraid of it? Yes. So did I, um, I think I misunderstood something. Mm -hmm. uh, in the, the was it Suragama Sutra? Mm -hmm. When Ananda fell victim to the lady that put the spell on her. Yes. And but Ananda was already attained on some level when that had happened, right? No. He was an arhat. Not yet. Oh, he wasn't. No. When he become arhat, the Buddha passed away. When the Buddha passed away, he become arhat. But during that time, he's not arhat yet. So Ananda was scared of ghosts, or. He's not he scared of ghosts because he has a. He still has to think in mind. That's why the demon they can able to see. Because, because he they, still had a thinking mind. Yes, he's still thinking. Mm -hmm. yeah. So my understanding of that is I think Buddha said something like unless your samadhi is indestructible. Yes, you it means you go to deep non thinking. Yeah. If you have non thinking, then all the demon will not see your mind. But if you do have thinking, like they even you see your mind, mind. Yeah, they will uh, they will harm But not necessarily if you're afraid of it, but just if you have a thinking mind. Yes, right? yes. Okay. So he already read the Surangama Sutra. It's a very good sutra, yeah, you too. So whenever you have that question, you gotta ask, is it Ananda or that person have achieved enlightenment or not enlightenment? Mm -hmm. Right. So it depends on the state. Okay, Captain, you have a question? Oh, so my mom was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom was wondering? I'll help her out. Okay. Um, Why don't you let her ask herself? She, well, I told her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now you've got to have the 
that true. <laughs> okay, what other question? Uh, I'll go for it. Uh, she said, what if, because she's scared of mice, so okay. does it, would, you, would it help her to look at, like, a mouse? Like, yes, yes, you have to look at the mouse and kind of like, but, so, <laughs> but you have to kind of like love and kindness, compassion, a mouse like me, me like mouse, or oneness. But he just said that, he's afraid of mouse. He mm -hmm. should not. Depend on that person. Situation depend on the practice, <clears throat> right? For adult, you have to face it. For children, you have to stay away. Depend on that person. Not everybody like that, right? So the more you stay away, you will afraid more. I mean, you don't face. But right now they are children. They have to stay away first. And when they get older, like you, they have to face it. You see? Because right now their mind is young, they have like a blank paper, white paper. They see whatever, they just put it in. Right now your mind is, your mind is different, your mind is older, now you can distinguish. Right? So it depends on the level of your children or your adult. If you are adult, you have to to face it. But you are children, you cannot face it, stay away. So you mean basically adult? Uh, it depends on that adult, it depends on that person, ability. Even that if that children, mm -hmm. they can face it, they face it. If the adult afraid, just that if you're afraid, stay away. So it depends on that level of that person, not adult or children. Yes, right. How do you know? Yeah, you can tell. But okay, well, okay. Um, my sister is scared of snakes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> she was so, coming out. My mom and I tend to buy gummy snakes home and try to scare it sometimes. And <laughs> I don't, I like actually don't know her like ability if like I put a snake in her face. <laughs> Like, I want to know, like, how far should I go, or should I even do it at all? Are you trying to tease her? <laughs> <laughs> My God, that's not good. Well, well, what if I'm also trying to help her get rid of her fears? But you have to tell her. You told her. You have to tell her, hey, I will help you to get the fear. Don't just surprise her and then she freak out. And she pass out, then you will create more bad karma. <laughs> if some people are afraid of something, then you just play with them and so they pass out and they die. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have to be careful. What is a joke, what is not a joke. Just like one of the person, uh, she's usually uh, people be come behind her and say something, she's shocked, she fake out. <laughs> right? So, so uh, someday this person, she just, she just do it. But then she pass out. She's about to die. She had to go emergency. You see that? So to, when you play, be careful. Sometimes the court can say you are murderer because you might have passed out. So you have to be careful. What is sometimes a joke, sometimes not a joke. Sometimes that joke creates you bad karma. Yeah, because you made a joke that person died. That means you kill her or him. So you have to be careful. Yes, you have a question? Oh, uh, you. Yeah, okay. Me. Um, yeah, I hope you can get rid of your fears. Yeah. Of, of, right, of snakes, of mice, and there are a lot of people afraid of spiders. Yes. Yeah, I hope you can get rid of the fears. Oh, uh, this is talking about this Zen master here, fear of uh, spider. So uh, this master, this student, this student every day is afraid of spider. So uh, one, of, one day the master said, you go meditation and draw a round circle in your belly and you put a knife here. When the spider come, try to kill the spider. So he go meditation without light and so let the spider come and come and come. And he realized, oh the spider come and I have to use my knife. And he about to kill the spider, the master of the light. He about to kill himself, the tummy. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. 
This means realize that if you are afraid of something, you are each of one, oneness. You are not separate. When you see your mind, your brother, your sister, you and him are one, then what, what, what mean, what's afraid of? Right? Because you are, and him are earth, water, fire, and air. He has earth, water, fire, and air. He or it has Buddha nature, you have Buddha nature. It's an all single being, all brother and sister. When we contemplate that, we see all snake, mice, whatever, goes, our oneness. Then our fear will be less and less. So every day we contemplate that. <coughs> now wait until you see a snake and contemplate, and you contemplate every day. You see all these animals, all these symptoms being our mind, inside of me. It's my brother and my sister. <coughs> My family. Why don't you afraid with your brother or sister? We are afraid of mouse. Probably that's why he might be a mouse. <laughs> you see? When you come like that, open mind, then your fear will be less and less every day. Right? That's mean to get rid of your fears, anxiety. So this is the suggestion you go on and contemplate. Contemplate that all center beings are, are you. You are all center beings. We are oneness. We are not separate. So we send our love, compassion, all this stuff. This means our minds will be open. When our, our minds are open, then we have no fear. Right? What to fear? We are the same. The mouse doesn't make that fear of death. We are fear of death. The mouse and the snake have wooden nature. They, we have a wooden nature. Because we are different forms of self. But when we create mind, we are the same. <laughs> right. So when we contemplate that, we have less the more fear. That's the, the way to get rid of your fear quickly. Yes. This um, wellness concept is kind of like an ideology, but not practical. I feel like. Yes. Just like the space. Or we have one space or many space. One space. You cannot say one space. And you cannot say many space. It's beyond duality. So one is one is beyond duality. Cannot be one and cannot be many. So this oneness is beyond duality. So if if you are able to understand this oneness, then it's beyond duality. Right. So I'm afraid of snake. A snake mm -hmm. can never become my sister or brother. It's a snake, it's an enemy. I cannot love this enemy. Because this is your thinking. It's through your thinking. <laughs> you say that's your enemy, then it's from your thinking. But if you have none thinking, yeah. you see? I, I love the snake, see? so why can't you? Here we go. I, I have no fear of snakes mm -hmm. whatsoever. I mean, if it was a poisonous snake, <laughs> I wouldn't put it on my body. But a regular snake, yeah, there's no fear. It's just this concept, you know, it's like a love your enemies, but can you actually really do that? You yes, you can do that if you have that level of compassion. Then there won't be war anymore. Yes. There will be peace everywhere. Yeah, there will be peace everywhere if we all have that. But we don't want to be like that. As a human. See? And there are bad people out there. Yeah, there's always bad people, but they have goodness inside themselves. Because all the bad and good is duality. Right? Because right now we use our thinking mind to analyze. Right? So when you are enlightenment, you are able to say to the nature, the two nature the same. But of course they have bad people and good people. We have to distinguish, to separate. Right? But the Buddha Sattva for them, bad people, they need more help than good people because they are suffering. They will be more dangerous than them. They will go on lower realm. In the future, they will be suffering. They stay in lower, lower realm like hell. Uh, lower, lower 
concept. So for us, it's very hard to to accept, but we have to practice. We just uh, had to spread our love, love and kindness, compassion. Sometimes it's, it's hard for us. If a person who already destroyed our life, it's hard to accept that way. But we have to do it. Because we cannot use hatred. It's like the Buddha said, you cannot hate and use hatred to destroy hatred. You have to use compassion, love and kindness to destroy hatred. Yes, correct. It's all wrapped up in perception. It's how you perceive the situation. Yes. Like I used to, I never would say that, oh, this person is my enemy, but I'd say this person is somebody I can't really get along with. But then I, I started to change my view. view, yeah. And I started to see, okay, this person I just have a misunderstanding with. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, he's trying to get something for his life, and <coughs> I'm trying, so we're competing. So. Then it became easier to find a way to make uh, peace between us. And I use that with my coworkers to promote a, a, a positive team so we can work together. So we're not fighting each other. I've worked with some teams and you're just fighting. Yes. And uh, I try to promote that, that harmony. And we have one of the best ships in our whole company because I think no small way to do what I try to create with them. And uh, you know, now half the t- company's getting fired and uh, they're all just worried about not being able to work with our team. Yeah. Go back to the, the snake question. There's more snake, human kill snake than the snake kill human. So who compassion? <laughs> so you have to analyze that. Human kill a lot of snakes. They put jaw, why, all this stuff. But almost sometimes a snake kill a person. You see that? So we have to look deeply at that. Or mouse, mice, whatever. But as a human, we are more evil than an animal, right? One human can kill all certain but an animal just killed one or two. Yes. When I was a kid, that I had screamed my head off if I saw a microscopic spider. Mm-hmm. My dad would come to kill it, and he's like, "Where? I can't even <laughs> find it. I want there, it's there." And it carried through until I was probably in my fifties. Just the tremendous fear of spiders, mm-hmm. and I thought, "Well, maybe I'll take some classes on spiders." So mm-hmm. by learning about them too, it would. Uh, Help me to get over the fear of the spiders. Yes. Mm-hmm. And something you said, uh, I've heard you say it a few times, they just want to live too. Mm-hmm. I must say that every day. They yes. just want to live too. Mm-hmm. And a couple like years ago, I was, able, I was able to yes. uh, have a tarantula yeah. walk across my hand, and it, yeah. was, it was soft like a kitten. <laughs> they have family too. Yeah, Mouse, they, have family. they have family, they have brother, sister too, like you. They, and like Charlotte's web. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have this mind that we have less faith. Yes. Yeah. Well, I also think we do need to have a lot of compassion for people who do have the fears. Yes. Because I think those fears, I mean, it's easy for me to say, oh, I'm not scared of it. Mm. But there, there are other things that I am scared of. Yes. And it's a very deep emotion, and a lot of times it arises from childhood, something we might have even forgotten some incident that happened in childhood. And yeah, it's a very deep kind of fear. Yes. And there are ways to get rid of the fear, but it's you can't just say, oh, you know, yes, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not afraid anymore. You have to practice. Yeah, there has to be some kind of a practice. Just like uh, smoking. You smoke for 30 years, now you have to let go of smoke. Cigarette is take time. Takes Patient. time, yeah. yeah. Practice every day. <clears throat> you can't just not do like that. If you do like that, you are Zen master, right? <laughs> One chop, oh my god. Okay, anything else? Question, comment? 
Yeah, you know, I was just wondering, Kathy, when you were watching the war documentaries, did you think that that was harming you or your emotions were being damaged in some way? Or was it just more of watching history and, you know, just the facts? Well, I don't like, I don't like seeing the dead bodies and, and that kind of stuff. But I like learning about history. <clears throat> I like seeing, oh yeah, I like hearing how those that don't know history are doing repeated or whatever, so you think, well, it's important to know that, but I don't really, I don't enjoy seeing the, the dead bodies and that kind of stuff, but it's interesting to hear you know, Hitler and all that kind of stuff. Church is here, no see. <laughs> Saturday, be there at uh, the ferry at 9, right? Come, uh, try to come early around 8, 8.45. Otherwise, if the ferry is too full, you have to waste another ferry to so come early. Because there's a lot of people, on Saturday, a lot of busy. But, uh, Michelle says it will be very busy on Saturday. So you have to come probably at least 8.30 to be there to get in line. You got to, Ferry can hold only 100 call. If you are 101, you stay back. <laughs> and you go next ferry. And then you go to the ferry. <coughs> you probably come eat lunch and go back home. <laughs> so I better try to wake, yeah, wake up early. Leaving at least 6, 6 30. I think from here to only a one hour drive. Right? No, one no, hour. No. Yeah, if no traffic. Um, Saturday sometimes traffic to sport, everything, if we, get, we go to Takama. So uh, just go, we are about 6 and leave it, 6.30, right? We'll be here at 7.30, have more <coughs> time to join around. <laughs> the lake, very nice lake that will be. Okay, thank you.